Let's talk about Advanced Persistent Threats, APTs. I will probably argue that uh, APT stands better for Adapted Adaptive Fishing Techniques. Uh, and you probably will agree with me by the end of this video. So, first of all, who is doing this? Who is launching these attacks? Well, these are sophisticated IT guys, hackers, most likely more sophisticated than the one that uh, we can actually pay because these folks work overseas with state sponsorship that not only provide abundant resources for them but also guarantee impunity to them. So, what's the target that they are looking for? Well, the target is privileged users. These are typically executives, or more than the executives, the admin people who are the one who uh, reads and opens their emails, and IT folks with admin type of rights. Okay. What is it that they do? Well, they are experts using social engineering, as we will see later, uh, in bypassing traditional security barriers. So they are not going to come th through here because they know that you know, you have some security there that makes it harder, they're going to come from here, where a user with privilege is already in the in your network, and they're going to launch the attack from there. What's the main vector they use for these attacks? It's mostly email, again with that social engineering, and also drive by downloads which basically means I'm going to lure my victim to go into a site they trust and they are going to get infected and they are going to be doing what I want them to do. So they are really looking for what is called the accidental insider. This is not the deliberate insider that is wants to do harm. No, this is just a person that works normally in your company uh, and, 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 and it gets caught on the on, on these attacks. What is it that they exploit? What's what's the munition that they use for it? Well, uh, they're going to use the least sophisticated attack they need, uh, but uh, when, when, when they have companies that are, have very good security, they're going to exploit zero-day vulnerabilities they may have, or recent uh, uh, vulnerabilities that may not be patched on Java, which this day has plenty of it. In fact, some people joke that Java stands for uh, just another vulnerability an uh, announcement. Uh, or SQL injection, which are still are very prevalent. SQL injection once inside, you know, the, the, the company to internal applications. Uh, the cross-site scripting, uh, they will exploit uh, always famous Adobe or and Microsoft type of vulnerability. So there are plenty for them to actually do on that. Uh, and what is the objective? Why, why do they do this for? The objective is to copy your data. And I put here copy. Some people like to say extract your data. But I want to say copy because copy is more pernicious than, 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 than stealing. I mean, if somebody goes into your house and, and, and still, God forbid, uh, steals stuff on your house, you will notice because you, you know the mess that they did and, and because you don't have the stuff that you used to have. Well, these people act in a way that they copy your data. You don't know that they are taking your intellectual property uh, away from you. Um, and, and, and you keep on working, so it's, in that sense it's more, it's more uh, pernicious. And they do this to companies that have, of course, firewalls, that they have a signature base, IPSs, intrusion prevention systems, they also implement host protection, 
agents, meaning they put those agents in the actual service themselves. Uh, they implement good or fairly good network segmentation. Uh, they patch regularly. They have their antivirus up to date. They have uh, some endpoint that ensures some configuration on the devices. They follow the principle of minimal privileges, meaning I'm going to give my people uh, only the the basic rights they need to do the job and nothing more and that all my machines uh, have minimal services in there meaning uh, you know uh, I'm gonna disable the stuff uh, that that I don't think people are using and if they don't complain a couple of uh, maybe weeks later I uninstall those things to reduce my footprint these are companies that uh, uh, use uh, strong password. They, they have uh, passwords that are cryptographically strong, long enough. Some of them may even use some multi-factor authentication and still they're going to be victims of APTs. Uh, these are companies that uh, may have uh, identity management in place. They may have uh, log management. They may be collecting logs and they may be doing some basic correlation. With, on the on the events and companies that do encryption and we'll see you know why all this uh, actually happens but you can say that the, these companies are basically compliant so and this is where you see that compliance doesn't necessarily uh, translate into um, being secure. So let's see the, the, the well, but before I see the faces of the, and we're going to describe the, the attack and how to protect from it, uh, let, let's talk about uh, an attitude that some people have, say, well, this is not happening to us. Really? Well, the only way of you knowing is uh, if you have uh, even a more sophisticated system uh, or security like the one that we explain here you, you have some um, you can do some big data analysis some sophisticated correlation or you have some uh, some honeypots that you, you monitor the you know copies of your environment and if that and you see that no one gets there so, uh, it's very unlikely that uh, most people are doing this so and the problem with this is that this is like defending against a sniper. You, you, you are in a battlefield and you have a sniper and you know that snipers are camouflage. So, and when, when somebody, one of these guys is camouflage, you don't see it. End of the story. Unless they make a move. So if the sniper makes a move, then you, you can detect them. If he remains stealthy, you don't see it. Or maybe if you do some patrolling afterward, you can see, the, you know, you know, evidence that uh, he has been hiding somewhere within your perimeter. The problem with this sniper, as we said before, is that he's not going to be firing a shot so you know that, oh, somebody dies so we have a sniper here. No, they're going to be taking uh, pictures of you. They're going to be copying your data. So think of this as maybe uh, probably a better, a better term is a, is a camouflage paparazzi that is acting and, and, and you don't know until uh, a thriller agency knocks on your door and tells you you've been hacked. So let's talk about the faces of, uh, of uh, an APT. So the first one is the recon where they will do some basic search on your network and social engineering to find out to plan their attack. The, the second phase is a phase of uh, breaking where they actually do get li like the sniper into position. Once they, they have done that, they phone or radio home to notify of the success of the penetration and ask for instructions to be, do, to be done. Then uh, what they do is that they move laterally from that workstation they uh, compromise into the target systems that, uh, that they, they want, that database uh, or that application that can actually provide them the data. Uh, once they locate that, they install you know, services or malware that is going to uh, do the, the the last phase, which is basically to compress the data, so you don't see that a big uh, chunk of data are leaving your organization. They're going to encrypt that payload, 
So make it harder for you to actually uh, detect that. They are going to fragment uh, that traffic, so, so they have a low, lower profile. They're going to disguise that in different ways, and they're going to send that data home and keep on working until detected. So let's see the first phase in detail, the recon. So this phase is, is not that much, uh, uh, much uh, doesn't begin with a technical aspect. I mean, they target a company. It's a company that I'm interested on the, on the, on the intellectual property or some particular information about that company. So basically they use, you know, famous Google, and they're going to uh, uh, do some social engineering uh, you know, this is Kevin, what Kevin Mitnick used to do with the phones. These people do with the Google and, and social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, you know. Uh, they, they look at other place, places, for example, if they're targeting the company, they look at the SEC uh, filings and they see when is the end of the quarter, you know, what, what what's the situation of the company. So they begin to create their, okay, how am I going to get uh, that person to click on the email I want? Uh, if it's IT people, they look at what conferences do these guys go, and what what projects are they currently working in order to lure them in, in talks, uh, talking into that. Of course, they're going to do some scans of your perimeter and see how much security you you have in place. So they will use the the the, the least sophisticated attack that, that they need, and they're going to start sending. This is quite typical spoofed emails to those target people, first emails that are, that are not malicious to make sure that they, they pretend to be a co-worker or somebody interested in the project that they are working and they begin a conversation in perfect English, uh, written English that is, and, and so, so at the beginning there's no uh, malicious load uh, but until the, they, they get the people to recognize them and, and, and lower their guard. And if you don't believe that this is possible, just do an experiment search for your uh, privileged user and do a little bit of that. You, you, you will not have those skills, but look for your experiment with your own privileged user in your company and, and, and find out how much you can learn about it. And, and then uh, you, you, you will understand better what I'm, what I'm talking about. 